Hey guys, welcome back to another RC Glider Basics video. My name is Thomas Lee and today we're going to talk about batteries and powering your discus launch glider. So to summarize, the most popular way to power a DLG by far is via a single cell lithium polymer battery in the nose. So the typical battery capacity is going to be 250 milliamps to 650 milliamps depending on the usable space and weight requirements of that particular model. But I know many newcomers to DLGs question the use of one cell LiPos to drive the receivers and the servos. So don't worry, it's been in widespread use for close to a decade now. So it's a proven system that works very well. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and find it useful, please remember to press like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell icon. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this video, so in turn, they will make it more visible to others who are also interested in RC gliders. So this simple step really helps our channel grow so we can reach more people like you. Thank you. When I first started flying DLGs in 2010, I was using 300 milliamp four cell nickel metal hydrate battery packs that I got with my Top Sky DLGs. And I used them for around two years. So at the time I remember reading on RC groups about people using 2S Rhino LiPos and I bought some to try, but for whatever reason, I was a bit intimidated by LiPos at the time and didn't really end up using it. People started talking about single cell LiPos around that time as well, but it was still more of a fringe idea and I was using high tech back then. The receiver I was using was not able to operate on one cell. So I stuck with nickel metal hydrate for a couple more years until 2012 or 2013 when I got sponsored by GR Japan. The GR receivers were 1S capable and by then more people started using single cell LiPos in their DLGs so it has started to get a following of users. Plus the Hyperion DS09s and the GR285s which were the gold standard DLG servos back in the day also worked really well on single cell LiPo power. Now all of a sudden instead of having a 300 milliamp battery and having to swap out you know, batteries multiple times a session I can now stuff in a 900 milliamp LiPo and fly for hours. Now, as I got more experience with LiPos, I did go back and try 2-cell again, and it does offer the advantages of higher torque and speed, but since speed isn't important for DLGs and the torque on 1S on the current servos are strong enough, the allure of single-cell simplicity and the long run times was just too strong. And I think this is why single-cell LiPos became the de facto power source for DLGs for the last 7-8 to eight years. Now sometimes buying the perfect 1S LiPo may not be as easy as before since most of them are now designed around the form factors for tiny whoops and other small drones and toys. Armsor now has two sizes and capacities available for DLGs and they're a perfect fit for many models. Check them out at armsorusa.com. I'll link it down in the description box as well. They come in packs of four and our measurements are quite accurate which is really helpful when you're checking to see if they'll fit in your model. Now let's talk about equipment. Pretty much any receiver and servo are going to be okay with single cell LiPos nowadays. In the last few years, I've used FreeSky, Spectrum, Grautner, JR, and Futaba, and they all worked on one cell. I know Jetty and TBS Tracer also works on single cell, but I think there are still some models of high-tech receivers that don't like single cell input. So if you're using high-tech or anything I did not list, just double check and test it yourself to be sure. In terms of servos, they'll pretty much all work until your receiver dies at 3 to 3.3 volts, so there's nothing to worry about. Now personally, I'm, I'm a KST guy. I love their servos. They're a great bang for the buck and the performance is second to none. So the popular DLG servos from KST are the X08s and the new tiny X06s, and they also have the brand new A08s which are a step up from the X08s. These are all 1S and 2S capable, so regardless whether you're using 1S or 2S, you can power the entire system directly without BECs or voltage boosters. Just going back, I mentioned simplicity. So with a single cell LiPo, all you need is a USB power bank and a $1 charging chip. And at the field, you just plug that in and it starts charging and it'll stop once it's full. There's nothing to set, nothing to really monitor, nothing to press, it just works. Charging at home, almost every current charger is going to be able to charge single cell LiPos, so just use whatever you already have at home. In terms of storage, LiPos will last longer if you store them at 3.8 volts per cell. So that means if you're using a 1S LiPo, you store it at 3.8 volts. And if you're using a 2S LiPo, you store it at 7.6 volts. I do that for all my batteries that I know will not be used for a couple of weeks but I do make an exception with my 1S packs that are already in the models. Honestly, 
I just keep them topped up so I can go fly on a whim. Yeah, it does degrade it a bit over time, but I cycle them once every couple months to keep an eye on them, and usually I replace them at the end of the year with a new pack. DOG batteries are around $5 to $10 each depending on the capacities. So to me, it makes sense to freshen them up once a year to safeguard our $1,000 gliders. Now that's about it for today's RC Glider Basics video. Thank you for watching and remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.